Hello guys, and welcome to Program Artist. In this episode, I will talk about third-party error handling. So why am I talking about this at all? Third-party libraries, as their name suggests, they are written by third parties with their own conventions for, for the API, for how to call methods, for the naming conventions, for the parameters, and for the errors they throw. And sometimes their conventions are different from our conventions. Moreover, their conventions can change and you don't want to be dependent on their conventions everywhere. Like you want to minimize the effect of that change to as specific place as you want in order to, when you, for, for example, replace a third party or you upgrade a version of a, some third party, you would want that effect to be as minimal as you can. If they're throwing errors in different way that you're used to, that your application is built for, uh, then you would like some kind of way of translating the errors that they throw uh, to your kind of language of your errors, so that your application can handle them in, uh, in the way that you want to handle it, and not in some weird way, or some unexpected way, or even crash. So let's imagine that we have some kind of third party, and let's write it. Okay, so we have a some third party. Okay, some third party library, and it has one method. That's all. One method that does stuff. So do stuff, and it is a function that does stuff. And we don't really know what stuff it does. All we know that it can throw errors. Okay, so let's write the code of that third library. Okay, so what this third party does, it's actually quite mean. It, it always throws an error, not initialized, uh, and it does it when the library was initialized, was not called, and I'm not gonna write this logic, you can imagine that it has some kind of initialized method, that when you call it, uh, it initializes the third party, and if you don't call it, and you try to use it, it, it throws you an error. Okay, so what's the problem with this third party? Uh, well, first of all, the errors that it throws is, are simple errors, okay, you cannot distinguish between them, uh, only you can distinguish between them by the message they are uh, giving. For example, in this uh, scenario, you can know that it is a not initialized uh, error only by the message inside the error, okay? But in your application, for example, you distinguish between errors by some type. So, uh, in your application you have uh, some uh, I don't know, not initialized error, extends error, okay, you have some kind of stuff, something like this, okay, and what am I doing here, wrong, okay, probably this, no, what's wrong here? Constructor implementation is missing. Okay. No, okay. So, what I did here is actually created uh, the error that extends from an error. And it, this error means that uh, every time it is thrown, something is not initialized. Okay? So, our application expects the error not initialized error, but the third party throws some kind of generic error with the message not initialized. Okay, so what we would do now, we would actually wrap the third party. Wrapping third parties is actually useful not only for error handling, but also, but also for giving some unified API, API that you are used to and not the API that the third party is giving you and also when you are upgrading third parties or changing them, it wouldn't affect all the application, only that specific wrapper. So exactly as the same reason that you're doing it for the API for using it, it's the same rhythm, reason you're using it for error handling. You're uh, wrapping it 
in order to translate the language of errors that the third party is using to the language of errors you're using. So we'll have, uh, I don't know, some third party wrapper. It will be a class, for example. And what it will do, uh, when it will do stuff, okay, it will have a function do stuff. And what it will do, it will try to do some third party do stuff. Okay, and when it catches some error, it will this handle error with the error. Okay, and handle error will be a private handle error any. Okay, and what the handle error will do, it will translate every error of the third party to some kind of logic that you want to do. For example, in this case, I will rethrow the error, but in other cases, you might, for example, uh, do some logging or some graceful recovery. For example, maybe you would like when the not initialized method error is thrown, maybe you would actually like to initialize the library and then call the method again. Okay? Uh, but in this case, I will just rethrow the error. So I will check if error instance of error. Okay, I'm doing this because actually third party libraries can even throw strings or numbers. It is allowed in JavaScript, so it is allowed here also in TypeScript. So if it is, if it is an error and error message is equal to not initialized, okay, so now I am giving uh, some meaning to this error. I'm translating the error of the third party to my error. So what I'm doing a new not initialized error with some kind of message and I'm actually gonna wrap change the message okay not initialized is not uh, very useful in this case I will say that some third party is not initialized and I can even give some kind of hint what should the programmer do so for example I can say something like you should call uh, the initialize method of this class or do something else. You have watched an episode about third party error handling. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more programming tips videos by clicking over here or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to see more code related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Programmers.